This problem is related to calculating empirical formula and density of a solid. Let us read this problem. So first part we have that is we have to calculate empirical formula of this compound. Empirical formula can be calculated if I know total number of effective atom inside a unit cell. So we have to basically calculate total number of effective atom for a unit cell. Let us first consider for oxygen atom. So number of oxygen atom. So if I see this unit cell we have 8 oxygen atom at the corner and due to corner atom we have a contribution of 1 by 8 to this unit cell we have one oxygen atom in the center of this cube and this will contribute 100 percent to this unit cell because this lie completely inside this unit cell. So contribution due to this oxygen atom is 1. So total contribution is 2 atom. Now we can also calculate number of copper atom. Now we have a copper atom here, another copper atom is here, here and here. So we have four copper atom and all are inside this cube. So we will have effectively four copper atom. So we can write formula. So we have four copper atom and two oxygen atom. That is empirical formula is Cu2O. So in this case we have charge is also balanced because we have Cu plus. 2 and oxygen has a negative charge of 2. So this is the empirical formula of compound. Now B part we have, we have to calculate coordination number for copper and oxygen. What is coordination number? This is number of nearest neighbor. So let us calculate number of nearest neighbor first for oxygen. So coordination number of oxygen. And you see this oxygen atom is touching to the four copper atoms. So this is nearest neighbor, this is nearest neighbor, this one is nearest neighbor and this one is nearest neighbor. So we have coordination number of oxygen is 4. Now let us calculate coordination number of copper. So this is the copper atom. Now it seems this copper atom is touching to this one oxygen atom. This is also touching to this oxygen atom and this is also touching to this oxygen atom. But basically this copper is atom is touching only two of the oxygen atom. This is touching this oxygen atom and this is also touching this oxygen atom. This copper atom is not touching this oxygen atom. So coordination number for copper is 2. This can also be verified by indirect method. So we have a formula number of cation per unit cell divided by number of anion per unit cell and this is equals to coordination number of anion
डिवाइडेड बाई कोऑर्डिनेशन नंबर ऑफ कटायन इन माई केस कटायन इज सी यू प्लस एंड एन आयन इज ओ टू माइनस सो पर यूनिट सेल वी हैव टू एटम ऑफ ओ टू माइनस दैट इज एन आयन दैट इज टू एंड कटायन इज पर यूनिट सेल फोर एंड वी हैव ऑल्सो कैलकुलेटेड कोऑर्डिनेशन नंबर ऑफ ऑक्सीजन दैट इज फोर सो दिस इज क्लियर कोऑर्डिनेशन नंबर ऑफ ऑक्सीजन इज फोर बिकॉज दिस इज टचिंग फोर ऑफ द कॉपर एटम so this one is 4 from here we can calculate coordination number of cation that is cu plus so we can calculate coordination number of cation and that is basically cu plus so this is 4 into 2 by 4 and that is 2 and this is expected so we have calculated coordination number of copper is 2 here also and we are also getting same value so this means the copper atom here we have it is touching to this oxygen atom and it is touching to this oxygen atom now let us say bc part estimate the length of edge so we have to calculate is length this time let us try to visualize this atom this atom is touching and this atom is touching so total this length is basically a body centered length so this is a body diagonal so if i extend this one this will touch here so this is a body diagonal so if i extend here it will touch to this it will cross to this oxygen atom so this is half of the body diagonal we can draw a diagram here so we have one atom here and one atom here and this is half of the body diagonal so we have one atom here and we have one atom here and we have one atom in the middle so in the middle we have copper this one is copper and these two are oxygen so this one is copper this is oxygen this is oxygen so we can say this length let us call this length is ab length ab is basically equals to this is o minus so radius of o2 minus plus this is copper so two times radius of copper plus and this is radius of oxygen 2 minus so length ab will be radius of two times oxide ion plus copper plus ion we have to calculate this body diagonal length if you remember if edge length is a then body diagonal is root 3a so body diagonal length this is equals to root 3a where a is the edge length we have calculated av length that is 2 times radius of oxide ion plus radius of cu plus ion we can also calculate what is the body diagonal length so this is 2 times ab so we can say body diagonal is this is equals to 2 times length ab and we have calculated ab so this is 2 times 2 times of radius of oxide ion plus radius of copper plus ion so this is basically 4 times radius of oxide ion plus radius of copper plus ion 
Now this one and this one we can equate. So this is body diagonal length and this is also body diagonal length. So root 3a is equals to 4 times. Now we can plug these values. So radius of oxide ion. This is given 1.26 and this is 0.74. So this is 1.74, let me check once again, 1.26 and 0.74, that is 2. So we have a tungstrom. So from here we can calculate A is equals to 8 by root 3 angstrom. That is we have 8 divided by a square root 3. So this is 4.61 angstrom. Now let us discuss D part. And this part says estimate the density of compound. So we have to calculate density. Density is an intensive property. So this is an intensive property. This means if I consider this mass of the given compound or if I consider a microscopic unit cell, density will be same. So density is a intensive property this means density at microscopic level and at macroscopic level should be same that is we can calculate weight of a unit cell divided by volume of a unit cell. And weight of a unit cell is simply, so we have effectively 4 oxygen atom and 2 copper atom. So we have 4 copper atom and 2 oxygen atom. So weight will be 4 times copper is 63.5 plus oxygen is 16. So let us calculate this value 4 times 63.5 plus we have 2 oxygen atom that is 2 into 16. So this is 286. So, weight of a unit cell is 286 AMU. We can also convert into gram. So, weight of or mass of a unit cell this is equals to 286 into 1 by 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 gram. This is because 1 AMU is equals to so we are using conversion 10 to the power 23 gram. Now let us calculate volume of a unit cell. And since this is a cube, so volume is simply a cube. We know the edge length that is 4.61 angstrom. We can convert angstrom into centimeter. So we will have 10 to the power minus 8 centimeter. So a q is the volume. So we will have 4.61 raised to the power 3 into 10 to the power minus 24 centimeter cube. So from here we can calculate density. Mass is 286 into 1 by 
10 to the power 23 volume is 4.61 Q and this is 10 to the power minus 24 this is gram and this one is centimeter cube so from here we can say 286 divided by 6.023 into 4.61 raised to the power 3 into 10 to the power minus 1 so we will have 2860 divided by 6.023 into 4.61 raised to the power 3 so let us calculate this value so we have 2860 this divided by 6.023 multiplied by 4.61 raised to the power 3 so this value is 4.84 and unit will be gram per centimeter cube so we have density of copper 2 oxide copper 1 oxide this is copper oxide in which copper has oxidation state of plus 1 so this is copper 1 oxide or we can write copper 1 oxide its density is 4.84 gram per centimeter cube and this density is logical it should be greater than 1 because water has a density of 1 and it should not be so high so this density is logical so you see in this problem what we have learned we learned how to calculate effective number of atom in a given unit cell effective number of atom and then how to find coordination number directly and indirectly indirectly means number of cation per unit cell divided by number of anion per unit cell is equals to coordination number of anion divided by coordination number of cation and then we said how to calculate as length that is how we can use geometry to calculate as length finally we said density is an intensive property